Hi, everyone. I'm Joyce Slater. I'm a storyteller, and I am here to tell you some jack-o'-lantern tales. Now, sit back. These are the not-so-scary Halloween stories for all you little ones. Okay. I bet a lot of you remember that little rhyme that we did last year with some pumpkins. Here are my pumpkins. All right. Now, I want you to follow along. You can point to the pumpkin. And maybe by the end of the program, you will be able to do the rhyme with me. All right. Let's put up our hand. How many fingers are there on this hand? Five. That's right. And there are one, two, three, four, five pumpkins. All right. Now, this is how it goes. Five little pumpkins sitting on a gate. The first one said, oh my, it's getting late. The second one said, there were goblins in the air. The third one said, I don't care. The fourth one said, let's run and run and run. The fifth one said, are you having Halloween fun? Okay, we will do that again at the end of the program. And maybe by then, you can do that rhyme with me. I hope you're all getting excited for Halloween. Because we did that pumpkin one, I think we should do another pumpkin story. So this is a story about Grandpa and his pumpkin patch. Grandpa planted a garden every year, and this year he planted a pumpkin patch. Now, he had put those seeds in the ground, he had watered them, he had fertilized them, and he watched them grow. The vines went everywhere. Oh, my, yes. And pretty soon, some flowers came on those vines. And then when the flowers disappeared, pumpkins started to grow. <clears throat> Well, it seemed that in the fall, there was a contest. The person who could grow the biggest pumpkin would get a prize. So Grandpa, why, he, for he had fertilized, he had watered his pumpkins. He was hoping he would have the biggest pumpkin. And sure enough, one of those pumpkins grew and grew and grew. It was a big pumpkin. He thought it was time to pull that pumpkin off the vine. Well, he went out to pull that pumpkin off the vine. He grabbed a hold of that big pumpkin and he pulled and he pulled and he pulled. But he couldn't pull it off the vine. He said, I need grandma's help. So. He went to get Grandma, and Grandma came. Now, Grandma pulled on Grandpa, and Grandpa pulled on that great big pumpkin. Let's all pull together. He pulled, and he pulled, and he pulled. They still couldn't get it off the vine. They said, we need Father. So Father came out, and Father pulled on Grandma, and Grandma pulled on Grandpa, and Grandpa grabbed a hold of that pumpkin, and he pulled and pulled and pulled, but Grandpa still couldn't pull it off the vine. They needed Mother. So Mother pulled on Father, and Father pulled on Grandma, and Grandma pulled on Grandpa, and Grandpa held on to that pumpkin. Let's all pull together. He pulled and pulled and pulled, but he still could not get it off the vine. They needed brother. 
while brother pulled on mother, and mother pulled on father, and father pulled on grandma, and grandma pulled on grandpa, and grandpa had a hold of that pumpkin, and he pulled and pulled and pulled. Still couldn't get it off the vine. They needed sister. So sister came out and sister pulled on brother, and brother pulled on mother, and mother pulled on father, and father pulled on grandma, and grandma pulled on grandpa, and grandpa pulled and pulled and pulled on that pumpkin, but he still couldn't pull it off the vine. What were they going to do? Well, the dog said, woo, woo, I could help. Oh, wow. So the dog pulled on sister, and sister pulled on brother, and brother pulled on mother, and mother pulled on father, and father pulled on grandma, and grandma pulled on grandpa, and grandpa pulled and pulled and pulled on that pumpkin, but he still couldn't get it off the vine. So the cat, meow, said, I could help. So the cat pulled on the dog, and the dog pulled on sister, and sister pulled on brother, and brother pulled on mother, and mother pulled on father, and father pulled on grandma, and grandma pulled on grandpa, and grandpa pulled on that pumpkin. He pulled and pulled and pulled, but he still couldn't pull it off the vine. Along came a little tiny mouse. They all looked at the mouse. The mouse said, well, I could help. Now, the mouse was very tiny, and they kind of laughed at the mouse. But the mouse said, you just wait. With all his might, the mouse pulled on the cat, and the cat pulled on the dog, and the dog pulled on sister, and sister pulled on brother, and brother pulled on mother, mother pulled on father, father pulled on grandma, grandma pulled on grandpa, Grandpa firmly held that pumpkin and pulled and pulled. And with all of his family, they pulled it off the vine. But that pumpkin popped off the vine. It hit the ground and it, it broke. It broke into about 25 pieces. Grandpa said, oh, now I won't win the contest for the biggest pumpkin. But Grandma gathered up all the pieces. She took them in and cooked them. And she made pie, pumpkin pie. Do you know she made 10 pumpkin pies from, the, from that big pumpkin? There were so many pies. There was a pie for grandpa, grandma, ma father, mother, brother, sister, the dog, the cat, and the mouse. There was one pie left over. And grandma said, I think there's a pumpkin pie contest too. And she entered that pumpkin pie contest and she won. So, in a way, that biggest pumpkin did win the prize. And that is the story of pulling the pumpkin off the vine. Oh, my goodness. I hope you joined in. If you did, give yourselves a big hand because that's so important. And remember who was in that story. Okay, now I have a story. It's not about a pumpkin, but it's very similar to a pumpkin. It's a gourd. How many of you know what a gourd is? You know, sometimes gourds are funny shapes, but a pumpkin is sort of like a gourd, except sometimes gourds get really hard. You could almost knock on them and they would make a sound. So there was a little old lady one day. She was in her house and she was making biscuits. Now, 
She was rolling out the dough and folding it back. Let's do it together. She was rolling and folding and rolling and folding. She was getting very thirsty. So she went outside to the creek and she had her gourd. It was an old gourd that was really hard and it had been carved out. And so it was like a cup. She went to reach down to get some of that nice, cool, clear water when she tripped and her gourd fell out of her hand and went floating down the creek. Oh no, she ran after it, but she couldn't catch it. She said, I need another gourd so I can drink my water. Let's all do that together. So let's drink our water. Mmm, nice cold water. Well, she looked around at her gourd patch, but all her gourds were shiny green. Oh my goodness, they were so pretty. But you know, you're never supposed to pick a gourd until it's ready. Well, this old lady, she said, hmm. I'm picking a gourd. And she pulled a gourd off the vine. She had to dry it out. So she sat it on top of the mantle of her fireplace. She just put it right there. And she went back to folding, to rolling and folding and rolling and folding that dough for biscuits. Suddenly, that gourd fell off the mantle and hit the floor. She said, what? How could a gourd fall off a mantle and hit the floor? She picked it up. She put it back up on the mantle. She went back to rolling and folding and it fell off again. She said, something must be wrong with this gourd. She took a chair and she put it right in front of the fireplace and she put that gourd on the chair. Well, she went back to her rolling and folding and rolling and folding when that gourd fell off the chair, bounced one, two, three, and bopped her on the head. She said, what? That gourd bought me on the head. Well, then that gourd started chasing her around the room. She went out the door and she was running. She was running as fast as she could. You wouldn't think a little old lady could run so fast. But there she was, running, running, running. When who should she see but her old friend, the wolf? He said, what are you doing, old woman? She said, I'm running from that gourd. It's chasing me. It bopped me on the head and it's probably going to do it again. He said, oh, don't worry about it. I'll take care of it. Well, she ran into the wolf's house and the wolf stood right up to that gourd. But did you know that that gourd went around and around that wolf and then bopped him on the head? And he said, "Uh uh-oh, no way, old woman. I think you're on your own. Goodbye. And she ran out of the door and started running again. She ran and ran and ran until she met her friend, the fox. The fox said, hey there, Granny. What you doing? She said, I'm running from that gourd. It, it, it's It's a silly green gourd. It bopped me on the head. He said, oh, really? Come on in my my den and I'll take care of that gourd. Well, she went in and of course that gourd came right up to the fox, went around and around and around, bopped him on the head and bopped him on the behind. Mm Mm-hmm. Well, the fox said, oh, Granny, I'd really like to help you, but this gourd is dangerous, so you better be on your way. Well, she thanked him, and she started running again as fast as she could, but that gourd was right behind her. 
she saw a little house up ahead, and there was a boy that she knew his name was Jack. He said, Granny, what's wrong? She said, you see that gourd back there? It's going to it's going to bop me on the head. He said, come on in my house. I'll take care of it. Well, she got into his house and hid in the back room. Now, he was standing behind the door and that gourd shot right into his house. As soon as it did, he closed the door and he looked at that gourd and he said, ha ha. That gourd started going around and around him. And you know what he did? He sat on the gourd, crushed that, that gourd to a bunch of pieces. Now, that shiny gourd was just a glitter in there on the floor. He picked him up, all those pieces, and he threw them into his fireplace. Well, they started to catch on fire and they sparked and the sparks went up the chimney and out so everybody could see these beautiful green sparkly things coming out the chimney. They all stood around and watched. Well, you know, that old woman was really relieved. She said, that's a relief, Sonny, for helping me out with that gourd. Why don't you come on back to my house? I got some biscuits I'm going to make. So Jack started walking back to her house with her. And they invited the fox. And they invited the wolf. And they all went back to Granny's house. And she cut out that dough with a, a glass. She put those biscuits, raw biscuits, on a, a cookie sheet, and she put them in the oven. And when they were done, she pulled them out, put them on the table, put out some freshly churned butter, and they all had biscuits and butter. And you know, they sat around and talked about that green gourd, but at the end of the day, Granny said, I will never pick another green gourd. Because you know what? It just might bop me on the head. All right. Give yourselves a big hand for being good listeners. Oh, you are so good. Okay. You know, that leads me to another granny story. Once upon a time, there was a granny. She had a grandson. His name was Johnny. And one weekend, Johnny was coming to spend the night at her house. Now, she always loved having Johnny come and spend the night at her house. He slept in a great big bed in a room that was just for him. Now, that day when he came, why she had the room all fixed up and he, he brought his little suitcase. He put it in the room and after they ate dinner that night, he got ready for bed. She said, now, Johnny. You're going to be just fine in here, right? You aren't afraid of being in here, are you? And he said, oh, no, Granny, I'm not afraid up here. I've been here before. But that night, after he climbed in bed and Granny kissed him, why, he tucked in and Granny turned off the light, click, and closed the door. Eee! Johnny started to cry. She said, oh, no. She opened the door. Eee! Turned on the light. Click said, what's the matter, Johnny? He said, I'm scared. She said, what if I bring the dog up? Okay. So she went down. She got the dog. She put the dog in bed with Johnny. And this time she kissed Johnny. She kissed the dog. And she turned out the light. Click. And closed the door. Eee! But this time the dog started barking and Johnny started crying. She opened the door. Eee! Turned on the light. Click. 
said, what's the matter? I'm afraid, said Johnny. And the dog went, hmm, hmm, hmm. She said, what if I brought the cat? Okay. She went downstairs and got the cat. She put the cat in bed with Johnny and the dog. She kissed Johnny. She kissed the dog. She kissed the cat. She went over. She turned out the light. Click. She closed the door. And they all started to cry. She said, oh, no. She opened the door. She turned on the light. Click. She said, what's the matter? Said, oh, we're afraid. She said, okay, what if I brought up the goat? Okay, bring the goat. So she went out to the barn. She got the goat. She brought the goat in. She took the goat in bed with Johnny and the dog and the cat. And this time, she kissed Johnny. She kissed the dog. She kissed the cat. She kissed the goat. She turned out the light. Click. She closed the door. Eee. And they all started to cry. Oh, no, she said. She opened the door. Eee. She turned on the light. Click. She said, what's the matter? They all said they were afraid. Oh, dear. What if I bring the horse? Oh, they all nodded. Yes, bring the horse. Bring the horse, said Johnny. And the dog barked. Woo! And the cat meowed. Meow. And the goat. Bah. So she went out. She got the horse. The horse climbed up those stairs. The horse got in bed. And Granny kissed Johnny. Kissed the dog. Kissed the cat. Kissed the goat. And kissed the horse. And just when she turned out the light, click, the bed, boom, fell apart. And they all landed on the floor. Oh, my goodness. She turned the light back on. Click. She saw all of them on the floor. Mm, what am I going to do? She took the, the horse out and took it back down to the barn. She took the goat back to the barn. She took the cat out of the room and she took the dog out of the room. And now she had to find some place else for Johnny to sleep. Well, she did find another little bed for him to sleep on. And it was right in her room. And the very next day, you know, she put some oil on those hinges in Johnny's room right after they fixed the bed. And that night, when Johnny went to sleep, why, she kissed him goodnight. She turned out the light, click, and she closed the door. And it didn't make a sound. And this time... Johnny was not afraid. And you know, he fell sound asleep and slept the whole night through. And that's the story of the squeaky door. Now, oh my goodness, there are so many stories. But I think I'll tell you a story about two rabbits. This little rabbit is called Rugalug. Can you say that? Rugalug. Now, a little tiny rabbit, you know, he always did what his mama said. His mama was a great big rabbit, and they lived in a hole in the ground. Now, his mama always said to him, when I leave, you make sure you stay in that hole because there are scary things out in the world. And Rugalug would say, yes, Mama, I know. I'll stay in here because I always do what you say, Mama. Well, he was tucked in that hole when he heard something 
in the grass. It went swish, swish. He thought, what is that? Swish. Can you do that with me? Swish. He pulled one ear up out of the hole so he could hear better. Can you pull one ear up for me? And he heard it louder. Swish. Swish. He pulled the other ear up. Now he could hear it even better. Swish. 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 He thought, what is that? It seems to be very near. He raised his eyes up over the hole. He couldn't see anything, but he heard sss, swish, swish, swish. Then he popped his whole head up and he looked around and there it was. It was a snake. It was going swish. And it reached up and it grabbed that little bunny. <gasps> oh, no. Now, that little bunny started squealing. Oh, oh, mama, mama, mama. You know, just like we all do when we get in trouble. And, of course, his mama heard him because her ears were much bigger. And she heard her little baby crying. She came hopping, hoppity hop, hoppity hop, hoppity hop, hoppity hop, as fast as she could. And she found her little baby in the in the throes of a snake, not around his. It was around his whole body. And you know what she did? Why she had some big feet. She took one of her big feet and boom, she pushed that big old snake and kicked it clear across the field. And then she grabbed her little baby and they hippity hop, hippity hop, hippity hop, clear across the field and hid under a bush. And that was where they made their new home, right under a bush. And that snake never found them again. But you know, from that day on, that little snake stayed away from that rabbit. And that little rabbit, uh huh, that little rabbit never popped his head up out of the hole again. And he stayed safe. And he did what his mama told him. To do. And that was little Rugglug. All right, let's see. What other story do we have? Oh my goodness. We have told the squeaky door, we told Rugglug, we told Grandpa and the pumpkin, we told the green gourd, and we told. Well, we told about the little pumpkins. Now, let's see one little story to end before we go back to our pumpkins. All right. Once upon a time, there was a little boy. He went into a house. He heard this house. Well, it was all dark was very, very dark. He was in a very, very dark house. And he heard something was going rap, rap, rap. He thought, what is that? He kept following it because this little boy was not afraid of anything. He went this way and that way, but he couldn't find it. He went up the stairs. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And he heard rap, rap. It was louder. 
he thought. Where is it coming from? Where is it coming from? He couldn't find it. He looked in all the rooms, but he still couldn't find it. So then he opened the attic door, and it kind of creaked. And he heard it louder. Rap, rap, rap. He went up the attic stairs. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. He looked around the attic. And he heard rap, rap, rap. It kept getting louder. He walked towards one piece of furniture and then another. And, you know, finally he found this chest of drawers and he opened up the drawer and there it was. Rap, rap, rap. It was a roll of wrapping paper. All it wanted was to get out of that drawer. And let's say it together. Rap, rap, rap. And that was a wrap of our stories today. So let's close with the five little pumpkins. Do you remember that now? Let's say it again. All right, put up five fingers. You got your five fingers for five little pumpkins. And let's say that rhyme. Five little pumpkins sitting on the gate. The first one said, oh my, it's getting late. The second one said, there were goblins in the air. The third one said, oh, I don't care. The fourth one said, let's run and run and run. The fifth one said, are you having Halloween fun? All right. Thank you, everybody, and I hope you have a lot of fun for Halloween because it's coming, and you know, if you go trick-or-treating, you just remember to say thank you. So long!